Hey there everybody, I'm Ben Mankiewicz, welcome to TCM. Up next today, a comedy released in 1968, and it was savaged at the time for its excessive bad taste and monumental insensitivity. Of course, that was the point. The New York Times called it shoddy, gross, and cruel, but over the years, opinions have changed considerably. Sure, it's still a bit gross and cruel, but it's great. To quote film critic Roger Ebert, it's one of the funniest movies ever made. The American Film Institute placed it 11th on its list of the 100 best comedies in movie history. From writer and director Mel Brooks in 1968, it's The Producers. The premise is simple but awfully clever. If a Broadway show flops and closes, the producers of the show are off the hook and are not obligated to repay the investors. Knowing that, Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder set out to pull off a scam. Their plan is to raise a ton of money, then produce a surefire flop. Their plan seems guaranteed to succeed when they find a play certain to fail, a play called Springtime for Hitler. And the title isn't metaphorical or ironic. It is, quote, a love letter to Adolf Hitler. The two producers tell the writer they want to show the world, quote, the Hitler you love, the Hitler you knew, the Hitler with a song in his heart. Lines like that are why the New York Times objected so strongly to the film. Anyway, the producer's plan backfires when audiences misinterpret the play as satire. The film marked the directorial debut of comedy writer Mel Brooks. Brooks started in showbiz in the 1940s as a stand-up comic, then spent much of the 1950s as a writer for TV star Sid Caesar. With this comedy, Brooks became a filmmaker as well. It also made a star Gene Wilder and helped pave the way for more Brooks-Wilder collaborations, including Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein from 1968, also featuring Kenneth Mars and Dick Sean, the producers.